Top 10 Artistic Masterpieces Inspired by Biblical Stories In this video, we'll explore the 10 most impactful artistic masterpieces inspired by biblical stories. Get ready for a visual journey that reveals how faith and creative genius come together to bring to life stories that have shaped our culture. Number 10. The Return of the Prodigal Son, Rembrandt Among the countless artistic interpretations of biblical stories, Rembrandt Harmonsoon Van Rien's The Return of the Prodigal Son stands out as a masterpiece that transcends time and cultures. Painted in 1668, near the end of the artist's life, this work is not just a testament to Rembrandt's technical mastery but also a profound meditation on redemption, forgiveness, and unconditional love. The story behind the painting is based on the parable of the prodigal son, narrated in the Gospel of Luke. It tells of a young man who squanders his inheritance on a life of excess until he finds himself in desperate and miserable conditions. Upon returning home, expecting little more than to be treated as one of his father's servants, he is welcomed with open arms and a feast in his honor, symbolizing forgiveness and joy for his return. What makes Rembrandt's interpretation exceptionally moving is how it captures the moment of reunion. The father, leaning over his returned son, envelops him in a compassionate and loving embrace, while the soft yet decisive light highlights their figures, leaving the rest in shadows. This masterful use of light not only emphasizes the emotion of the moment but also symbolizes hope and redemption. The figure of the son, kneeling and worn, represents humility and repentance, a powerful reminder of human vulnerability. In turn, the father's posture suggests not just forgiveness but a grace that goes beyond what the son could have anticipated, echoing the unconditional love that, according to the parable, God offers to humanity. Number 9. Judith and Holofernes, Artemisia Gentileschi. This work, dating from the 17th century, stands out not only for its technical mastery but also for the personal story of overcoming and resilience of its author, intertwined with the bravery of its protagonists. The story of Judith, a Jewish widow from the city of Bethulia, recounted in the Book of Judith in the Old Testament, is one of cunning and courage. Faced with the imminent destruction of her city by the Assyrian Holofernes, general of King Nebuchadnezzar, Judith uses her wit and beauty to infiltrate the enemy camp. With the help of her maid, she seduces Holofernes and, taking advantage of his drunken state, beheads him, thus saving her people from conquest. Artemisia Gentileschi, born in 1593 in Rome, became one of the most acclaimed painters of the Baroque period, at a time when women were rarely recognized in the arts. Her depiction of Judith and Holofernes is particularly notable for the rawness and realism with which it portrays the climactic moment of the story. The painting shows Judith in the act of beheading Holofernes with an expression of determination, while her maid firmly holds the general, underscoring the tension and drama of the moment. What makes this work even more fascinating is how it reflects Gentileschi's own struggles. The artist overcame numerous obstacles in her personal and professional life, including surviving sexual assault and battling gender prejudices in the art world. Some critics and historians suggest that Gentileschi identified with Judith, seeing in her story a parallel to her own quest for justice and personal affirmation. Number 8. The Annunciation, Fra Angelico. Among the numerous artistic representations of the Annunciation, the divine instance when the angel Gabriel announces to Mary her role as the mother of Jesus Christ, Fra Angelico's interpretation stands out for its purity, serenity, and spiritual depth. This work, created around 1430 to 1432, is not just a testament to Fra Angelico's artistic skill but also a window into the soul of a painter whose faith was as deep as his talent. Fra Angelico, a Dominican friar and early Renaissance painter, is known for his devout approach to religious art. His name, a nickname meaning, the Angelic Friar, reflects the contemporary perception of his holiness in life and art. Viewing his Annunciation, one feels the presence of this devotion. 
The work is not just a visual account of a biblical moment but a meditation on faith, humility, and obedience to divine will. Located at the Museo del Prado, Madrid, Fra Angelico's Annunciation is an emblematic work of the Florentine Renaissance, characterized by its use of perspective to create depth and space, an innovation of his time. The scene is set in a cloister or garden, symbolizing Mary's purity, while the architecture around suggests the union of heaven and earth at the moment of the Annunciation. What distinguishes this work is how Fra Angelico has captured the humility and grace of Mary, as well as the majesty and benevolence of the angel Gabriel. The color palette, with its use of celestial blues and soft pinks, complements this atmosphere of tranquil and reverent divinity. Light, another crucial element in Fra Angelico's work, seems to emanate from the figures themselves, symbolizing divine light and spiritual illumination. Number 7. Moses Saved from the Waters, Nicolas Poussin. The work, Moses Saved from the Waters, by the French painter Nicolas Poussin stands as a masterful representation of divine providence and hope. Painted in 1638, this piece is a true reflection of Poussin's ability to merge classical precision with emotional depth, elements that define his style and contribute to his reputation as one of the leading exponents of classical art in the Baroque period. The story of Moses is one of the most famous from the Old Testament. Born at a time when the Pharaoh of Egypt had ordered the death of all newborn Hebrew males, Moses was saved by his mother, who placed him in a basket and let it float on the river Nile. The Pharaoh's daughter found the child, rescued him from the waters, and raised him as her own son. This act of divine salvation not only marked the beginning of the life of one of the greatest prophets of Judaism but also laid the foundation for the eventual exodus of the Hebrew people from slavery in Egypt. In Moses Saved from the Waters, Pusin captures the exact moment when the Pharaoh's daughter discovers Moses. Surrounded by her maid servants and soldiers, her central figure displays a mix of surprise and compassion upon finding the child. The balanced composition and use of vibrant colors highlight the human and divine emotions converging at this biblical moment. What makes this work particularly interesting is how Poussin manages to convey a message of faith and providence. The presence of nature, symbolized by the River Nile, not only serves as the means of salvation for Moses but also represents the divine presence and guidance throughout the prophet's life. Number 6. The Sacrifice of Isaac, Caravaggio. Among the numerous works of art inspired by the Bible, Caravaggio's The Sacrifice of Isaac stands out as a deeply emotional and dramatic representation of one of the most tense moments in the Old Testament. Created at the dawn of the 17th century, this work depicts the biblical episode where God tests Abraham's faith by asking him to sacrifice his only son, Isaac. Caravaggio's ability to capture the emotional intensity and drama of the moment makes this painting an eternal testimony to the power of art to evoke deep spiritual and emotional responses. Caravaggio is renowned for his innovative use of chiaroscuro, a technique that employs strong contrasts between light and dark to create a sense of depth and volume. In The Sacrifice of Isaac, this technique is masterfully used to focus attention on the protagonists of the story. Abraham and Isaac. The light illuminates both figures, highlighting the expression of distress on Isaac's face and the determination on Abraham's, while the angel stopping Abraham's hand emerges from the shadows, symbolizing divine intervention. What makes this work especially unique is how Caravaggio captures a fleeting moment full of tension and emotion. Abraham's hand firmly holds the knife, ready to carry out the divine command while his other hand grips Isaac, who looks up with a mix of fear and submission. The angel, on the other hand, intervenes just in time, his hand touching Abraham's in a gentle but firm gesture. This capture of such a critical moment speaks to Caravaggio's genius for narrating a complete story of faith, obedience, and divine grace with a single image. Number 5. David. Michelangelo. 
The statue of David carved by Michelangelo Buonarroti between 1501 and 1504 is undoubtedly one of the most impressive and significant artistic representations in history. Not only is it an astonishing technical achievement in marble, but also a profound expression of faith and the human spirit. This masterpiece, originally located in Piazza della Signoria in Florence, Italy, and now preserved in the Galleria dell'Accademia in Florence, continues to captivate millions of viewers with its beauty and powerful message. Michelangelo chose to represent David at a particular moment, before his battle with Goliath, filled with determination and faith in God. This choice is relevant, while many previous representations showed David after the victory, with Goliath's head at his feet, Michelangelo captures the tension and potential of the moment before the confrontation. This decision not only highlights David's youth and physical beauty but also his inner strength and unwavering faith. At the time of its creation, the statue of David was not just an artistic expression but also a political symbol. Florence, a city-state proud of its independence amid struggles against larger and more powerful enemies, saw in David a representation of its own struggle and resilience. The placement of the statue in Piazza della Signoria, in front of the Palazzo Vecchio, the town hall of Florence, underscores its importance as a symbol of vigilance and courage in the face of adversity. Michelangelo, just 26 years old when he began this project, demonstrated a surprising technical mastery. Carved from a single block of Carrara marble, David stands 5.17 meters tall, presenting a detailed study of human proportions and anatomy. The technique of contraposto, where the body's weight rests on one foot, endows the statue with dynamism and a life that seems to defy the stone from which it was created. Number 4. The Tower of Babel, Peter Bruegel the Elder. Among the many masterpieces inspired by biblical history, Peter Bruegel the Elders, the Tower of Babel, stands out for its unique and detailed interpretation of one of the most fascinating and allegorical tales from the Bible. Created in 1563, this painting is not just an impressive visual representation of the famous biblical story from Genesis but also a subtle critique of unchecked ambition and the inevitable disunity of humankind. According to the Book of Genesis, the Tower of Babel was a project undertaken by a unified humanity speaking a single language, aiming to build a city and a tower, with its top in the heavens, demonstrating their power and avoiding being scattered across the world. However, God, observing humanity's arrogance, confused their languages and scattered the people across the earth, leaving the tower unfinished as a reminder of human presumption and the need for humility before the divine. Bruegel masterfully captures this moment of transition through his work, using architecture and a multitude of figures to reflect both the monumental ambition of the project and its eventual failure. The tower, inspired by the architecture of the Roman Colosseum and other architectural wonders of the ancient world, looms imposingly at the center of the canvas, symbolizing grand human aspiration. However, its unfinished construction and the confusion among the workers illustrate the turning point where communication breaks down and the project collapses under the weight of its own arrogance. What makes Bruegel's The Tower of Babel particularly interesting is how the artist infuses the scene with rich detail and realism, inviting the viewer to reflect on the nature of communication, cooperation, and human pride. The painting becomes a window through which we can contemplate not just a biblical story but also a timeless lesson on the limits of human ambition and the consequences of disunity. Moreover, Bruegel incorporates elements of his own social and political context into his work, reflecting the tensions and conflicts of 16th century Europe. Thus, the tower serves as a multifaceted symbol of human aspirations, both divine and earthly, and how these can lead to discord without mutual understanding and respect. Number 3. The Last Judgment, Michelangelo. In the heart of Vatican City, within the majestic Sistine Chapel, lies one of the most impressive and theologically profound artworks ever created, The Last Judgment by Michelangelo Buonarroti. This gigantic mural, covering the entire wall behind the chapel's altar, is a display of artistic virtuosity and a deep meditation on the Christian faith. 
but what makes this work so special and worthy of attention? Here are some fascinating aspects you might not know about this masterpiece. Completed in 1541 after four years of laborious work, the Last Judgment was commissioned by Pope Clement VII, the successor of Pope Julius II, who had commissioned Michelangelo to paint the Sistine Chapel's ceiling two decades earlier. Measuring over 13.7 meters wide and 12 meters high, this work is a colossal reminder of divine power and the promise of salvation. The painting depicts the second coming of Christ and the final judgment of all souls. Christ, imposing and at the center, surrounded by saints, separates the blessed, destined for heaven, from the damned, dragged to hell. What makes this composition unique is the dynamics of the moving bodies, the expression of emotions, and the use of space, which defies conventions and demonstrates Michelangelo's innovation as an artist. Number 2. The Last Supper, Leonardo da Vinci. At the heart of the Italian Renaissance, Leonardo da Vinci created one of the most emblematic and studied representations of Jesus Christ's Last Supper. This masterpiece captures a crucial moment in the biblical narrative and encloses mysteries and symbolism that have fascinated scholars and enthusiasts alike for centuries. Located in the refectory of the convent of Santa Maria della Grazi in Milan, Italy, the innovative technique and profound symbolism of this mural painting have made it an object of constant admiration and study. Leonardo da Vinci chose an unconventional technique for painting the Last Supper. Instead of using traditional fresco, which required speed and precision due to the plaster's quick drying, Leonardo experimented with a technique that allowed him more time to work and adjust his composition. He applied a prepared plaster base on the wall and then painted over it with oil and tempera. This decision, though innovative, contributed to the work's rapid degradation, requiring multiple restorations over the years. The Last Supper captures the exact moment after Jesus announces that one of the Twelve Apostles would betray him. This revelation triggers a range of emotions and reactions among the Apostles, masterfully captured by da Vinci. The work's composition is symmetrical, with Jesus at the center, providing a focal point of calm. The Apostles are grouped in series of three, each group displaying different degrees of surprise, disbelief, and curiosity. This arrangement not only reflects Leonardo's mastery in portraying human emotions but also adds a narrative depth that invites reflection. Number 1. The Creation of Adam, Michelangelo. The Creation of Adam, painted by Michelangelo Buonarroti between 1508 and 1512, is one of the most recognizable and admired scenes in world art. Situated at the center of the Sistine Chapel ceiling in the Vatican, this Renaissance masterpiece stands out not only for its aesthetic beauty but also for the deep theological, philosophical, and scientific interpretations it has inspired over the centuries. The painting depicts the biblical moment when God gives life to Adam, the first man, with a simple touch of his finger. This moment of creation is a powerful expression of the connection between the human and the divine, symbolizing the breath of life bestowed by God on humanity. What makes this representation particularly fascinating is the way Michelangelo has captured both the majesty of God and the inherent beauty of the human form, a Renaissance ideal. The composition of the work is revolutionary. God is depicted within a form reminiscent of a human brain, possibly suggesting God's omnipresence in the human mind and soul or interpreted by some as a symbol of the creation of human intellect. This interpretation has been reinforced by studies indicating that Michelangelo, who had knowledge of anatomy, may have deliberately incorporated this imagery to suggest that the true spark of life is intellect and creativity. <laughs>